Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our session on unlocking value, value addition, standards, branding, and marketing. This session will deliberate upon the opportunities in the value addition segment of Indian seafood products in focused markets where the sector has huge opportunities to grow, the regulatory compliance required in the export markets, desirable interventions to facilitate ease of doing business, and the marketing and branding activities that can be un undertaken with a view to strengthen India, Indian seafood products for global visibility. To moderate this very important session, we have with us Mr. Arvind Das, Co-Chairman CII National Committee on Fisheries, Animal Husbandry and Dairy, and CEO Nutrivis Global Advisory Services Private Limited. We also have a very eminent lineup of speakers. We will be hearing from Mr. K. Srinivas, Chairman MPDA, Dr. Poona Malakondeya, Special Chief Secretary, Animal Husbandry, Dairy Development and Fisheries, Andhra Pradesh, Sri Ashwini Kumar Rai, Additional Chief Secretary and Chairman of MP Revenue Board Government of Madhya Pradesh, Dr. L. Narsimha Murthy, Senior Executive Director, National Fisheries Development Board, Dr. Karuna Sagar Edya, Senior Fishery Officer, Products, Trade and Marketing Services, FAO Fisheries and Aquaculture Department, Mr. Dinesan Cheruvat, Managing Director, Kerala State Cooperative Federation for Fisheries Development Limited, Mr. Manoj Vargis, CEO, Kings Marine Products, and, and Mr. Amit Vatsayan, Partner, Business Consulting, ENY. With this, may I please request Mr. Das to take the session forward. Over to you, sir. Uh, sir, you're not audible, sir. You're on mute. Am I audible now? Yes, sir. So, as, as I said, our last session, and we have, uh, uh, and we have a nine eminent, uh, well-known uh, speakers with us, and uh, I think we should use the time very appropriately to understand each one's views. And this is a pretty critical session, uh, as fishery and marine sector plays an essential role in human welfare social and economic development worldwide. So with diverse resource ranging from the deep seas to lakes and the mountains and more than 10% of global biodiversity in terms of fish, shellfish species, our country has shown continuous and sustained increments in fish production since independence. Our export of marine products was 12.9 million metric tons, worth of 6.68 .6 billion dollars in 2019 and 20. To continue the growth in the marine sector and the fishermen, it is imperative to assess the market trend, demand of species, fishing practices, fishing time, necessary uh, infrastructure at harbor, ports, fish landing centers, technology upgradation for current fishing vessels safety and security of fishermen, etc. The global market for health and wellness foods are currently exhibiting strong growth, especially since last two years, you might have seen the change in consumer preference going towards more health and nutrition and immunity. Fish is perceived as a healthy food containing high levels of digestible protein, PUFA, and cholesterol lowering capability Increasing awareness of fish as a food associated with the health and wellness is expected to create a positive impact on its consumption in the coming years. The role of farm producer companies and the fish fishery sector will boost fishers' income, and many companies are already working with the PPOs in various states. The session will deliberate upon the opportunity in value addition segments of Indian seafood products in focused market. And that we say is very targeted market where the sector has huge opportunity to grow. Not only grow as first is that, how do you keep our position, our rank in the world export ranking intact and grow from there? The regulatory compliance is required in the export market. Desirable interventions to facilitate ease of doing business and the marketing and branding activities that can be undertaken with a view to strengthen Indian seafood products for global visibility. 
Having said that, as you are all aware, aware uh, <clears throat> the food safety is increasingly becoming a more focused and countries, importing countries are bringing in stricter standards. So in that context, and also in the context of the uh, skill committee as, as chosen fishery as a, 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 in a sector which will provide a export boost to the country. So hence the target as set as how do you double the export by 2025 and again double it by 2030, the additional species uh, is been uh, looked into. So we're looking at marketing efforts in the targeted market. So we are looking to uh, the uh, the entire sustainability factor, which is going to be key deciding factor. Way who wins in the world market in the next five to ten years time. With this, I think I'm going to bring in uh, Mr. Amit Batsayan, uh, the partner business consulting ENY. And I'm going to go talk about uh, a few lines about him. Uh, he lives the agriculture development sector. And the best thing is that he has he traveled around. He worked around more than 20 countries in the and and closer to his heart, the issues of climate change, women empowerment, livelihoods and agriculture sector transformation. Believe me, uh, fishery is a sector which provides livelihoods. It brings in gender equality. It empower women. So here is a, we've got a speaker with us who is going to set the context with respect to agriculture sector transformation, livelihood, women empowerment, climate change, all that things, and how that has created value for India within the Indian market and also in the export market. Thank you so much. And over to Mr. Amit. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Das. You you've been very kind in the in the, in the introduction. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my uh, fellow uh, panelists, uh, distinguished panelists, uh, colleagues from the industry, uh, um, uh, respected officers from the ministry, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it gives me a, a lot of pleasure to be here amongst this August, August audience uh, and also to talk about uh, context setting of something which I am personally very passionate about. Uh, and we've been privileged also to, of course, work uh, as the program management team for uh, the Pradhan Mantri Matsampada Yojana. Uh, and, you know, uh, but also a lot of what I'm going to talk about comes from the experiences which we are uh, seeing happening across the this industry. So uh, without further ado, you know, fish is really such an integral component of our balanced diet and uh, uh, providing a healthy source of dietary protein and nutri nutrition, including micronutrition, such as calcium, vitamin uh, A and B12, etc. So there is really an evidence staring at us in terms of the effects of fish consumption on lowering the risk of coronary heart disease and stroke, as well as growth and development. So, uh, you know, of course, the health benefit varies. But what I think is very clear out there that in today's world, which is increasingly becoming health conscious, uh, fish is definitely a preferred medium of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, increasing protein intake as well as micronutrient intake. Uh, it's traditionally been uh, part of diet of many communities. So, you know, more than 3.1 billion people globally depend on fish uh, for, uh, you know, 20% of uh, their animal uh, protein intake. And hence what, you know, naturally we have seen the global fish con consumption increase from 9 kgs as per the FOA data of 1961 to 20 kg per capita in 2018. And the global seafood uh, consumption will reach a level of uh, approximately 21.5 kilogram per capita by 2030. So in a way, across the last 60 years, we have seen a year on year increased growth trend happening across uh, fish. Uh, and uh, with this increased fisheries and aquaculture production and growing market demand, uh, fishery products accounted for 1% of global uh, mercantile trade in, in value terms and representing more than 9% of total agriculture exports. Worldwide exports amounted to $164 billion in 2018, which is up from uh, $8 billion, which was which used to be the case in 1976. Uh, in 2018, fish imports by developing countries represented 31% of the global total by value and 49% by quantity. And over 90% of the quantity, which is the live weight equivalent of trade in fish and fish product, consisted of processed products. So for example, this excludes, of course, live and fresh whole, whole fish with frozen products representing the highest share. 
and about 70% of the quantity exported consisted of products destined for human consumption. So there is a very clear trend which we are seeing in, in this sector. And with such tremendous growth potential, it is essential to unlock the value of the fishery sector positioning fish as a superfood for natural, uh, natural protein and nutritional content and the culture of fish as means of providing livelihoods and means of employment across the value chain and strata. Uh, and, you know, as Mr. Das already mentioned, uh, this is a sector which uh, traditionally impacts those who are marginalized, vulnerable and are impacted by climate change. So across the world, the fisheries and aquaculture sector is a major source of employment. In 2018, an estimated 59.5 million people were engaged in the primary sector of fisheries and aquaculture. And in total, about 20.5 million people were employed in aquaculture and 39 million in fisheries. Nearly 820 million people depend directly or indirectly on fisheries and aquaculture for their livelihoods and with small and medium enterprise representing 90% of fishing business globally. So uh, needless to say, I think the, the moot point is that uh, if you are looking at a sector which directly impacts those who are marginalized and those who are where you know we really see as the future engine of growth, I think this is a sector which is really making a direct impact in that. A surge in the fish prices seen across the fisheries value chain, uh, which is adding to the, of course, to the income of fish farmers, processor, retailers, hoteliers, exporters, and you know thereby it makes the entrepreneurial business opportunities beneficiary and highly profitable. So all the above external factors, uh, you know, uh, promotion of various, along with the promotion of various initiative by uh, the government of India, have made India a leading country in, in the aquaculture fisheries. Uh, though our domestic uh, fish consumption is uh, quite low, however, the Indian fish industry is evolving with changes in the global food demand. And I think today's session, we would see some of the point of views and conversation aligned to, uh, to that issue. Uh, but with this tremendous growth comes risk. As, as fish consumption may pose toxicological risk due to contamination. Hence, ensuring quality of fish as a highly perishable item is a huge task. The international norms for import of quality of fish varies from country to country and are strict and difficult. And you know, some of our colleagues today in the panel will be talking about it. So this has thus created a big gap in realizing the potential of the sector for diversification of fish species for increasing export and also increased domestic fish consumption for achieving global nutritional security. Under its flagship scheme, the government of India uh, uh, has launched uh, Pradhan Mantri Matsampadaya Yojana. It has been putting efforts to increase domestic fish consumption from five kilogram per capita to 12 kilogram per capita, double the exposed to rupees one lakh crore and increase productivity from three to five uh, uh, tons per hectare. However, Absence or inadequacy of regulatory framework for prevention and control of aquatic animal diseases or usage of quality and certified aquaculture inputs and minimization of economic losses slows down the progress of the sector for achieving sustainable growth. Indian aquaculture is currently facing the absence of a comprehensive regulatory framework for prevention and control of spread of aquatic animal disease and uses of quality and certified aquaculture inputs such as seed and feed. Uh, besides residue control, minimization of economic losses and for meeting international requirements to facilitate import and export of aquatic animals and their products. These are, I think, a critical element. And you, you know, if you, if anybody is familiar with the aquaculture industry, it is one of the fastest growing industry. And qualitative aquaculture production not only uh, sustains the export of fish and fisheries products, but also facilitates greater global market for our aquaculture products. Uh, a, a very uh, another point in, in this case is also about the use of spurious inputs. So banned antibiotics, pharmacologically active substances, spurious seed feed, for example, coming from unknown sources or unregistered hatcheries, produce supply to unknown and unregistered vendor middlemen, uh, lack of affordable functional and robust radio frequency identification, tags for automatic data capture, limited budget and insufficient staff. So the list goes on, but I think these are, I think, some of the key issues are, uh, which are uh, uh, leading to export rejections uh, on account of detection of residue of, of uh, uh, antibiotics such as uh, nitrofuran and uh, chlorophenicol and other bad pharma uh, pharmaceutical, uh, pharmaceutically active substances, uh, along with the inadequate monitoring, control and surveillance imports. So all of these uh, are really uh, creating uh, a 
quite a significant challenge uh, in terms of the legal origin requirements of exporting countries. And uh, uh, these are some of the important parts which we must also deliberate today uh, in terms of what kind of guideline and standard, standard operating procedures are required for these good aquaculture practices. Uh, the solution is the need of the R and a two-pronged approach by designing and developing a suitable framework for, to start with, a standard certification, accreditation, and traceability across fish value chain. And the second one on fish branding and marketing is something which you know may need more deliberation. For example, in Japan, the Japan Agriculture Standard Certification System allows various agricultural commodities, including seafood products, which comply with the standards specified for each product to bear the quality label, the JAS uh, mark. Uh, so again, I mean, this is something which we can also deliberate upon today. Similarly, in Republic of Korea, to secure food safety and to harmonize with international standards of food quality, the government enacted the Fishery Products Quality Control Act in 2001. And HACCP mark is approved for use by the Korea Food and Drug Administration, KFDA, and the Ministry of Agriculture and Forestry uh, in, in Korea. So again, I mean, not to belabor the point, but also in uh, Republic of Korea, the National Fisheries Product Quality Inspection Service has three categories of certification for fisheries products. Uh, you know, this includes fish, uh, special fishery product, traditional fishery products, and fisheries products. So this certification scheme issues the certification document and a mark for each category to be used on the product. The accreditation marks are not only for quality control purposes, but also for preserving and promoting traditional fisheries products in the food market. So I think again, you know, I, I do hope that we'll be able to have a very, uh, you know, enlightening conversation today uh, within the panel on some of these issues. Uh, coming to the last uh, few points, uh, which is more around, uh, you know, the core part of the marketing that if, if we look at all of these activities around marketing in the flow of fish products from the farmer to the consumer, various operations required uh, are required to move the fish. And there are certain characteristic uh, elements which are common with the marketing of fish products, which demand peculiar skills for their operation. They include assemblage, storage, sorting, grading, packaging, labeling, storage, and transportation. So some of these really need to be aligned. And currently, I think many of the states are already uh, working on this, but this does need a uh, significant deep dive and investments coming in, in this area. Uh, and last few points on branding, especially it can involve third party certification as well as own branding and uh, a pesticide free label, for example, Thailand, uh, you know, is a good example of looking at how we can approach uh, some of the either self declared eco labels or third party uh, uh, assessment, uh, which can support uh, the, the branding and also ensure that there is price premium attached to it. Uh, Again, uh, the one of the things which I think also at the ministry, which has been discussed quite significantly, which is uh, also on the generic promotion. We have already seen with milk and with egg, uh, there is already successful examples of campaign. I think the, there is a need to deliberate that from a market point of view and from uh, you know improving consumption point of view, whether uh, a, a broader generic campaign promotion can be done for increasing the consumption of uh, fish uh, in, in markets which where the penetration is uh, is lower. So uh, to, uh, you know, to summarize on the marketing and branding that it is essential that marketing and branding campaigns are designed to build consumer trust leading to behavioral change. For this, the first and foremost step is to understand our consumers and then build focused marketing strategies for behavioral change, communication campaigns, uh, such as onboarding endorsers and influencers. Uh, for higher customer recall, you know, for example, there is action which is required in terms of uh, understanding of analytics from digital media platform, crowd campaigns, and a very successful uh, campaign, of course, which a number of us like, uh, remember is the one uh, one by NECC, uh, which said, you know, Sunday or Monday, Roj Khayande and uh, so on and so forth. So, uh, so at a macro level, it is essential that we make a phased and focused campaign based on consumer preference based in different regions, age group, incomes, and gender. Uh, to conclude, I think changing mindset is a time consuming and a huge task, whether it's the mindset of the consumer, whether it's the mindset of the producer, or whether it's the mindset of the, of the exporters. But I think it is something which is really required at this juncture. And it is really important that we, we are able to respond to the changing requirements in the market, uh, whether it's the export market or, or domestic market. And uh, it is, this is, I believe, the right time for us to be involved in such an important conversation. So therefore, the larger question today is how do we showcase 
the value of the fisheries sector to our stakeholders and consumers. So to further deliberate and upon these various aspects and garner market insight, corrective measures, I welcome our distinguished guests to our panel discussion. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to provide a context for this discussion. Over to you, Mr. Das. Uh, thank you, Amit, uh, for that. You know, uh, beautiful. You covered everything and made the uh, uh, my task easier uh, to maneuver from here. As you said, you know, not only look at the market of the export market, also look at the domestic market. Looking at marketing campaign or consumer behavior or market research, do it in India and outside, outside targeted market because India domestic consumption has a huge potential to grow. But there is a huge gap with respect to per capita consumption, and that's the nutritional security and uh, this this sector can bring into this country. So that's a good point you're talking about. You're talking about mindset changing. The mindset changing with respect to food safety. You cannot have a standard for export. You cannot have a standard for domestic consumption. Human food safety has to be one food safety, no matter who I am and where, which state or which country I belong to. I have to have a safe. So that thing has to go into the Fishermen, uh, to the agriculture sector, to to the to the, to the supply chain, to the processing guys, and to the and the marketeers. That's that's a good point you brought it out. And, and I just want to tell you that you know today in the meeting the whole, whole day we're talking about equator. How since last two, two years there's not a single failure of the consignment in the international market. And they are looking out at how they're going to carry it forward and, and take a leadership position in the next two to three years time. That's the kind of country is targeting at. So. So, and and we have to move from a defensive position to put in infrastructure and and take the take the advantage of the IT system and technology to bring in control mechanism to provide a safe product in domestic market and also international market and create a differentiation in the international market so India brand stands out and we 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 succeed in which uh, I just to bring it uh, and now Mr uh, Mr K Srinivas. Uh, the chairman MPEDA, and 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 I know him since the point he has taken over uh, to become the chairman of the MPEDA. He's been working tirelessly in one thing. How do I going to bring in all the first the data, data integrated into the system? Are you talking about like you know, how do you focus uh, 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 the ta uh, target countries? How are you going to get out of this uh, the failures that has been passed? And how are you going to look, uh, move into the future with this? With a with a standard uh, with a deliverance that is 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 given it's given no matter what happens. And and he's he's been part of the scale committee uh, the whole uh, movement there to not double the exports and everything. So he's a 1997 batch IS officer. Before before getting into <clears throat> that administrative services, he's worked in BHL. He worked in Unit Trust of India. He understands corporate sector, and then uh, he was joint secretary department of agriculture and cooperation. And I, and I was uh, through CIA I was involved in in Nam. He was the he was the person who was instrumental in implementing the thing, making it a drawing board and making all the things is very very beautiful. But taking and and I know how much of uh, pain and everything we have gone through. And he was a, a person who was instrumental in implementing in Nam in this country. And now I'm looking at how do we extend that to in the fishery sector and all, that, and all the all the landing center. How do you going to uh, bring in the auction system? And and the the best thing is that seafood importing monetary program of USA for the export and uh, of shrimp from India to USA. That he he worked tirelessly and brought it in. So thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Srinivasji, uh, for being with us. And I want to hand over to you for a keynote address, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Arvind Das, and uh, thank you very much, Mr. Vasa, and for the uh, for placing everything in the context. And uh, I, I would like to place on record uh, some some of the objections I have <laughs> because uh, uh, you, you seem to be saying that uh, there is nobody to regulate, there is nobody to do any uh, quality control, there is nobody to. Uh, uh, look after standards, nobody to do any branding, things like that. But I have, uh, uh, I, 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 uh, I, I mean, agree to disagree with you <laughs> on some of the points, not all. Of course, a lot of points which you made, they're all, uh, 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 they're all relevant. But, but see, you have, there is something called a, a confederate, this, uh, uh, 
CAA is there, Coastal Aquaculture Authority, you know, they are supposed to do all these regulations, they are supposed to do the, from within two kilometers area uh, from the coast. So that is their uh, uh, jurisdiction and beyond that, I think the, the respective state governments are supposed to do the regulation. They are all doing, they are all doing and uh, maybe here and there, there may be uh, some issues, but uh, uh, the, the, the state uh, fisheries departments are doing their very bit and then the CAA is also doing. And you may be aware, I don't know whether you are aware of our aquaculture, uh, aquatic uh, quarantine facility in Chennai. Uh, you see, the entire, uh, the entire uh, uh, marine industry depends on one uh, important uh, species called l -1-Amai. This l uh, the one product of l is contributing to nearly 30,000 crores of exports uh, every year. And uh, this being an exotic species, we have to import the uh, the the brood stock from from the USA and other countries like USA. And then when anything comes uh, comes out, when anything comes in from uh, outside, then it has to undergo the quarantine. It has to undergo uh, the uh, statutory uh, testing for all this kind of diseases like viruses and all that. So we are doing that that part in Chennai. I'm very happy to say that uh, we we. we because of this, uh, we, we are able to uh, stop the, the infusion of uh, viruses from, from foreign countries. So, I think uh, only in the last 10 years, only two occasions, uh, we found out uh, some viruses and then we have successfully uh, blacklisted those companies also. So, I mean, th these things are there and then uh, uh, standards and uh, you somebody, you said the branding, I, I would like to cover uh, in, uh, uh, in my uh, presentation, I have a small presentation with me. I would like to, uh, uh, is it, this is the one? Yeah, is it the one? Yeah, is it is it visible? Is my presentation visible? Yes, sir. Please yeah. go ahead. Thank you, thank you. See? Uh, uh, yeah, full screen. Okay, am I... Uh, uh, this is a very small presentation. Uh, if you look at the export performance, uh, we are definitely doing uh, exporting to more than 100 countries, but uh, the top five countries like uh, USA, China, Japan, European Union, and uh, I think Vietnam, these five countries, they themselves uh, uh, contribute the major sh uh, share of that, 70% of that is uh, contributed by these five countries and the USA is the number one. If you look at this uh, graph, you know, 2010-11, uh, uh, where we were, and around 2.85 uh, billion dollars worth of exports, and now it is uh, into 2021. It has come to just uh, less than six billion dollars, 5.957. And now this year we are trying to <clears throat> achieve 7.8. That is the target given by the Department of Commerce, and uh, we are uh, we are on the track. And as you know, if you uh, somebody if you want interest, if you are interested to know the what is it, the world trade is around in 2020 around 142 billion dollars and we have just about 4% of uh, market share in that and then uh, uh, this year the target is 7.8 which which be because early, last year it was just 5.9 because of the covid it has come down and now uh, we need to uh, grow at a percentage of 31% to achieve this target given by uh, by, the, by the ministry as you know everybody is talking about that 400 billion dollars uh, uh, worth of exports from India and uh, the share given to marine products is about 7.8 billion dollars. And uh, this uh, slide shows that uh, uh, by the end of December 2021, we should achieve uh, uh, 5857 uh, uh, million dollars. But uh, I'm very happy to say that uh, we have exceeded that. So it is we have exceeded 6.1. That is uh, 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 last year, whatever uh, last year we have done around 5.9. We have uh, we have already exited that uh, within nine months time, and uh, I hope uh, uh, in the next three months we'll be able to achieve the remaining part of uh, 1699, so that the 7809 will be achieved. This is the overall picture as far as the exports are concerned. And uh, here uh, uh, I'm only going to talk about valuation because uh, seafood sector is a it's a very 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 vast area. And then the time given to us is only maybe 10 to 15 minutes, so I don't think I'll be able to talk about all the aspects of seafood sector, uh, but value addition is the, that's what I understand. 
So that's why I, I'm just confining to value addition uh, uh, because everybody is talking about uh, increasing the, the, the exports, export revenue. So our export revenue, uh, there are three, two, three methods of increasing their export revenue. Number one is that uh, we need to have uh, the more and more products, more and more uh, 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 products to export. That means right now, right now around 12, 12 and a half lakh uh, metric tons we are exporting. So instead of 12 and a half lakh metric tons, we had to export maybe 15 lakhs or 16 lakhs. So this is a, a bit difficult. This is uh, 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 possible, but a bit difficult. So the, the, what is the next point? Next point is that in, instead of getting uh, the, the realization, the, the uh, revenue, uh, 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 almost about five rupees we are getting now, five, five, five and five to five and a half dollars uh, per kilo we are getting. So instead of getting five and a half dollars uh, per kilo, uh, we, if we can get about six and a half to seven dollars, then definitely that, that also will, will increase. So this is also second method of increasing our revenue. The third method of uh, increasing the revenue would be instead of supplying the uh, raw materials, we can supply value addition. You know, uh, raw materials means the cost uh, will be very less and then value addition will definitely increase the, uh, the, the uh, realization. So this is uh, another third method. So these three methods, I am going to talk about the third one only because number one, I cannot increase the production. The 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 C card production is not increasing; it is going down uh, every year. And then the next one is uh, increasing the aquaculture production. That is also not that easy, uh, even though we are uh, uh, increasing uh, gradually. But uh, a immediate uh, increase from currently around uh, eight million uh, eight lakh metric tons. Uh, we can't uh, jump it to 16 uh, lakh metric tons immediately. That takes about maybe another, uh, maybe five to six years, maybe 10 years time. And uh, so that, that, that's why I'm going to uh, 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 emphasize more on the value addition part. Instead of getting uh, $5, uh, if you can get uh, $6, $6 or $7, then, then definitely we'll be able to achieve the target given by the government that is about uh, 1 lakh uh, crores, 1 lakh, right now it is around 50,000 crores. So we need to double this to 1 lakh crores. So that can be achieved uh, by, by creating the more and more value addition. So value addition, if, if you know, there are two, two chapters, chapter 3 and chapter 16. And chapter 3, we, we are a leading player. And uh, chapter 16, uh, we are nowhere in the picture. Uh, our our uh, uh, contribution is just about 10%. Compared to China, Vietnam, and Thailand, they are all very, very big countries uh, uh, as far as value addition uh, of uh, marine products can, is concerned. Uh, then, of course, this we need uh, uh, a lot of raw material. Also, the raw material, as you know, uh, uh, we have uh, some of the world's best uh, processing plants in the country, but their uh, capacity utilization is maybe around 40 percent, um, roughly. So uh, they are not able to utilize fully because uh, raw materials is not much. Uh, sometimes uh, uh, they, uh, they are not getting the raw materials. Uh, especially if I if I talk about Kerala, most of the Kerala plants, about hundred plants are there here in Kerala. They are all getting raw materials from Andhra Pradesh. And uh, Andhra Pradesh, as you know, they they also have so many uh, processing plants. So sometimes it's getting uh, raw material is, is a big problem. So that is why we need to uh, increase. Maybe we need to. We can imp import some of the raw materials from other countries. So, but there is a problem. Uh, if you want to import, there is something called a sanitary import permit is required. And if this permit can be stopped, if this uh, requirement can be removed, then then the, I'm sure more and more companies will be able to uh, import the, uh, the the raw materials. And then uh, when you want to import the raw material, we uh, the ports have to be notified. Right. Currently, uh, I was told only the Mumbai and Chennai are the only two major ports that are notified for import of raw materials. So, uh, our my recommendation would be to notify more and more uh, 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 major ports for import of seafood. And uh, when 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 we again when we import the seafood, they, there should be some testing facilities. As I mentioned, uh, we have an AQF in Chennai uh, to to uh, test the uh, imported uh, brood stock. Similarly. When somebody is importing uh, the the raw materials, there should be some testing facilities so that uh, uh, we we get clean material inside the country. Otherwise, there will be the issues with the diseases and viruses. And uh, of course, th these are all the major policy interventions that we 
we need to have uh, remove the sanitary input uh, import permit uh, for this for the import of raw material uh, for reprocessing and export and uh, we need to have a center for perishable cargo and promote establishment of more infrastructure for value addition as you, as you know it's very easy to say value addition create more and more value addition and then uh, but but you know what the, what the, the kind of problems we have in uh, creating value addition why our people are not interested our people we have around 1300 uh, exporters in the country uh, doing uh, export of raw uh, export of uh, marine products in the country but but most of them are uh, happy with uh, uh, with with export of uh, raw materials and uh, very few are venturing into into more and more value addition because there are three four uh, reasons for that number one there is a lot of risk risk in the value addition because when you do like I just give you an example if you have basmati rice it is enough you can easily export basmati rice but instead of exporting basmati rice you export biryani you export biryani you 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 make it uh, as per your choice and then that uh, biryani may not be liked by the customer if, if so the entire biryani will lose its uh, value it, uh, it will not get sold and then after 2 3 days it will get uh, spoiled so there is a lot of uh, uh, i'm just giving a very crude example so a lot of risk is available, uh, uh, associated with the uh, uh, creation and uh, propagation of uh, value added products and coupled with this uh, we need to have a lot of uh, uh, machinery this machinery is not available in the country right now uh, uh, whatever uh, machine is available is um, basically for the iqf machines we have we have that iqf means individual quick freezing machinery we have but but for for value addition that means ready to eat ready to cook uh, type of products which which are uh, uh, which are actually called value added products in marine products uh, we don't have that much uh, machinery and then machinery is very expensive and our people are not interested to uh, are not interested to invest more money invest uh, so we need to have some kind of incentives uh, to so that uh, the 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 uh, entrepreneurs can be uh, uh, encouraged to uh, uh, to invest more and more uh, on value added uh, machineries and of course we also have have to have uh, this uh, training also training to all our uh, employees also currently we have a pli scheme running uh, by the minister of uh, food processing industry but but uh, uh, this uh, pli scheme is only supporting the top uh, uh, major uh, seafood exporters there is a demand from our exporters that uh, this pli scheme should be extended to more, more and more exporters so currently the idea is any company with more than 500 crores turnover is eligible for a pli scheme so what about those company those companies with maybe 100 crores turnover 100 to 500 crores turnover so they are not uh, eligible to participate in the pli scheme so this is one of their uh, uh, demands and then uh, uh, coming to the market research marketing somebody said mr wasain said you need to create the, uh, the branding and all that. So how do we, very easy to say branding, create branding. And when uh, uh, definitely it's not an easy proposition. It is a very, very difficult proposition. All my major exporters, you call it uh, Mr. Avanti or Mr. Devi or Mr. Nekanti, or you name anybody, they are all exporting in the name of the customer only, in the name of the customer. Like for example, Cisco, Cisco, Costco, uh, what is the uh, uh, all those companies are there so they are uh, all our indian exporters are supplying in the name of cisco and costco only and they simply put uh, a small uh, word, word one, one small uh, somewhere in the on the packing a product of india that's all nothing else so if this is the situation currently with marine products and uh, if you want to create a product of india or if we create a branding for indian seafood it's going to be hell. Uh, I mean, it's going to uh, require uh, crores of money, crores of rupees. You know, branding is not easy. Uh, those, uh, those you know, those who are working in the end, where I'm sure they know uh, how much money is required for branding. And then crores of rupees is required for branding, especially. I tried for branding. Uh, I, I, I have given one advertisement in, uh, in, in BBC in some of the countries, uh, in, in USA and, uh, and, and Europe. And you know how much I, sp I, I spent just for 15 days time I spent about one and a half crore rupees. So this is the, this is the kind of amount we require for branding. So it's not an easy task to create a branding for Indian seafood. That is why most of our people are uh, not most. You can say 99% of our people, our exporters are uh, are doing uh, uh, in the name of the importers only. So but but uh, nevertheless uh, there is a requirement of branding. 
and but that requires some uh, money, some lot of uh, fund is required, and uh, then only it will be easy. It's, otherwise, it's, it's going to be very very difficult. And then then uh, I want to talk about market research and uh, market research. We have com completed a market research for Chinese market. China is one of the important markets for us. We are now trying to do market research for European countries, market research for Russia and all that. And we are also in touch with uh, some uh, our uh, embassies there so that they will also help us. So this is also a, an important thing. And then uh, fair participation. So far we are we have been participating only in uh, Boston and uh, and Brussels. And now Brussels, uh, this uh, last two years there are no shows because of Corona. And this year I hope uh, the Boston. Uh, uh, seafood show will be held uh, as per schedule in March, and the Barcelona show will be held in uh, uh, in, in April. And I'm sure, I hope uh, we'll uh, we'll be able to participate. I'm I'm I'll be able to take some at least ten of my exporters, top exporters, to these show, shows. Their delegations, and then uh, we are doing uh, uh, buyer seller meets, virtual buyer seller meets. Every week we are we are doing at least one buyer seller meets. All these things are also doing. And uh, trade promotion offices, yes. Again, uh, for marketing, we need some trade promotion offices. I have, we have some trade promotion offices. One is in uh, J J Japan, other one is in uh, in the in in New York, in USA. Uh, but but we 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 are uh, pitching for uh, more and more uh, some trade promotion offices, uh, especially in Gulf countries, maybe in Dubai, and one more in uh, in the Europe, and one more in China. So these are the three areas identified by MPDA. Uh, but but that we are uh, waiting for approval from the government and then the last but not least uh, we need to have ftas because you know uh, marine products is exp uh, is facing a severe competition for example uh, uh, the, uh, the the coming uh, thailand uh, with, with vietnam vietnam is an is an example they have an fta with the european union and vietnam uh, is one of our major competitors, and you, when they have an FTA, they are going to supply at zero cost, whereas we have to supply at maybe five percent, six percent. So our competition com competitiveness is uh, coming down. So we we are uh, pitching for an FTA with the European Union and also with the uh, UK. Now that UK has come out of uh, European Union, so that is also there. So th this, uh, but but of course, you know, FTAs is not that easy because there should be some give and take. Uh, yeah, yeah. Unless I give something, they won't give, give give something to us. So there are some issues are there. So these are all the uh, uh, the way forward uh, for our uh, uh, market research, branding, which is not easy, and of course buyer seller meets. Uh, we are we are doing uh, and uh, international fair participation, trade delegations, and value addition, and all those things. You no, know, we are trying to do that, and. Uh, uh, um, so uh, if these things are doing, definitely we'll be able to do that. And then somebody mentioned about uh, Mr. Arvind Das has mentioned about uh, uh, improving the cold storage, improving the uh, improving the infrastructure in the in the uh, in uh, in the harbors, fishing harbors. We have, have more than uh, two thousand fishing harbors for landing centers in the country. But but you know the, the pathetic situation is very very pathetic in those in those uh, fishing harbors. So that is why we have conducted a study and then we identified about 25 such uh, important uh, fishing harbors and then we are now coming out with uh, under the PMMSY, I think at least uh, five uh, fishing harbors are going to be modernized and uh, we ourselves, uh, Empeda, is uh, actively associated with our Cochin fishing harbor and and uh, hopefully uh, very soon we are going to start with a, we, we, are, we are going to start an SPV for, for running this uh, fishing harbor in a very, very professional manner. So that special purpose vehicle, uh, we are uh, waiting for uh, permission. And once it is uh, given, then uh, we are going to set up a, a special purpose vehicle for running, a, for, for, for uh, managing the uh, fishing harbor in Cochin. So these are all our ideas and uh, these are all the, this is the way forward. And uh, I hope uh, uh, at least some of them will, 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 will come true in the next, uh, in the near future. Thank you very much for this uh, opportunity given to me. And thank you very much everyone. Thank you, Mr. Srinivas. That's a wonderful you know, keynote address, and you touched upon everything, and very candidly you put it together. Yes, India has its own uh, standards and everything, and we are doing a pretty good business. Uh, but as uh, as uh, uh, Amit was talking about, and I was trying to reiterate that, uh, going forward, food standards will become tougher and tougher. 
and and moving from a private labeling to a brand building not brand marketing i'm talking about brand building if anyone takes up then consistency and food safety standards is going to be the key thing for a market share so in that context so uh, you will see in the next one to two years there are a lot of standards are changing in the international market in that context we have to keep ourselves ready and industry is working towards that with your help and with all the standard uh, fssai and everyone is in for it thank you so much for that excellent uh, keynote address uh, i'm very pleased that you could make it in on time thank you so much uh, now uh, moving forward uh, i think there's some change i think so i'm going to now invite uh, Dr. Uh, Poonam Malakonda, Special Chief Secretary, Animal Husbandry, Dairying and Fishery, and and for for a state uh, perspective, and uh, I just wanted to you know, uh, let you know that uh, his his her jail to Excel, everything is from childhood, and as I as I was going through. Uh, uh, her uh, details and I was talked of talking about her. She is a gold medalist in MSc, a masters, and and also um, uh, and she always wanted to do work on NIF genes. You know, uh, I and in my time in nineteen, uh, I'm talking about in nineteen eighty two. I was talking about same thing and NIF genes, everything. And 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 very rightly, uh, you your role model is uh, Dr. Chopra, the plant biotechnologist, and and you did a uh, PhD. On Dr. Subha Rao, known uh, known personality in this space. So the, thank you for uh, coming in, uh, Map. And now over to you uh, for for the state perspective. I will request to keep your this thing to ten minutes so that we can cover all of the speakers. Thank you so much. Over to you. Sir. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, very good evening to all of you. Uh, as uh, I'm very happy to be a part of this, and I uh, compliment you for organizing this. This is the need of the art. And uh, Andhra Pradesh, as you know, is one of the maritime states of the state and known with the longest, second longest uh, coastline. And uh, it is uh, has uh, uh, has been also a leading the country in both fish and shrimp production with 46.23 lakh metric tons and more than 30% share. If you see the CAGR of fisheries sector in last seven years, it's impressive. It's 12.8% against countries CAGR of 5.7. And it's a major contributor of seafood product exports. And uh, all uh, very, very impressive figures. But uh, now I would like to tell you that what we are doing to see that, uh, you know, we are leaders not only in the quantity, but also in the quality of the production. That's our concern in the state. So, while implementing the various central government programs and trying to knit them and weave them into this broad objective, there are some policy measures that the state government has taken in the last one year. And they have come up with uh, the AP State Aquaculture Development Authority for regulation, monitoring, and development of aquaculture in se sector in state, uh, pr primarily with a focus on the quality and registrations. The AP Feed Quality Control Act 2020 to ensure production and supply of quality and antibiotic free aquaculture feeds on par with the BIS FAO standards. And three, the AP Aquaculture Seed Quality Control Amendment Act 2020 for production and supply of quality and antibiotic free aquaculture seed to aqua farmers in the state and uh, ensuring the coastal security through registration of marine fish wing wells under the APFMR Act 1994 and MS Act 1958, implementation of color code and issuance of QR-based Aadhaar cards to the coastal fisheries, and ban on usage of antibiotics in aquaculture through district-level task force teams, and regular inspection of hatcheries, aqua farms, aqua input shops, for collection of samples, for testing for antibiotic with the help with the support of MPEDA and uh, CA. Similarly, there is also the state has imposed a ban on usage of poultry litter, poultry offal, and slaughter wastages in aquaculture for curtailing the transmission of antibiotics and to regulate the environmental pollution. Aquaculture zonation for regulating the unauthorized conversion of agriculture lands to aquaculture and promotion of area expansion in potential areas, which is saline, 
low productive barren inundated lands which are not fit for agriculture now while we have brought these policy support in terms of regulations which are very very important because these were completely gray areas what the state has also done is that if we have to give quality if we have to produce quality produce then we have to touch the farmers we have to go down to the village level we have to improve the capacities of the people who are producing these products and therefore the andhra pradesh state has come up with the uh, establishment of uh, raitu bharosa kendras what we call as farmer facilitation centers we have established 10758 farmer facilitation centers in every village of the of the state for every 2000 uh, uh, hectares this is there now out of this 10778 uh, 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 raitu bharosa kendras farmer facilitation centers there are 770 centers which are only dedicated for uh, fisheries and aquaculture so what what is being done what is being done in these raitu bharosa kendras is that all the farmers who are uh, growing the uh, who are growing the inland produce as well as these raitu bharosa kendras are also in marine villages so those who are bringing the produce now a lot of training is being technical training is being given to them the technical training is being given to them on integrated uh, crop management pest management integrated pest management integrated nutrient management and uh, every uh, uh, single uh, raitu bharosa kendra has a fisheries assistant who is a qualified government employee he is being trained and he conducts farmer field schools for the for the farmers who grow these products now these schools are like primary schools secondary schools with actually actual schools so it is done on the field and uh, the classes that are told in this are practical classes and they are validated by the university every material that is given to the farmer uh, is validated by the university so the farmers are told in these right from the day they start the they start the production they are told that what is important is not to grow large quantity what is important is that it also has quality while it's very easy to say do quality how to do it i am a farmer in the village level what support as government are you giving me so in andhra pradesh these raitu bharosa kendras are established at 770 locations in these clusters where the 770 employees are trained by universities given a syllabus and they are they are actually training the farmers how to grow quality product they are hand holding them uh, right from the day the from the day the seed is purchased so they also support in the uh, to go to hatcheries they also support to get the right product and then from every uh, every week these classes are held the water uh, body is tested uh, this testing uh, equipments also we have got uh, support from uh, our fisheries research institutes now they are available in every raitu bharosa kendras so this technical support then for uh, feed now you know that fish feed and feed supplements to aqua farmers is a largely unregulated market we are very proud to say that we are the first state in the country to have brought this regulation and uh, uh, now these fish feed the major fish feed providers these companies uh, they are now have entered into an mo mou with us and uh, uh, every raitu bharosa kendra the farmer has a facility he can order his product and this product is then uh, supplied by the company at the rbk level and this is properly tested before it is actually given to the uh, farmers similarly extending aquaculture input testing facility uh, uh, if we have to do such large tests then we need to have labs now we have the integrated aquaculture labs also we have set up 43 labs we had earlier the apeda labs they were uh, uh, they were three labs uh, and they were not sufficient at all so if we are talking of quality product 
then we have to have uh, not only the regulation in place, but we also have to have affordable testing facilities in place. These farmers, many of them are small and marginal farmers, and they don't care uh, whatever we say unless this type of support is given. So I'm very happy to say that in our state with NABARD funding, we, have, we are setting up 43 uh, such labs, and uh, we are going to uh, have uh, uh, the, uh, the testing facilities in these labs, uh, which will be affordable and which the farmers can, den can, can get it done at the uh, uh, at their doorstep. In addition to this, we have around 350 fish landing centers. Now, fish landing centers is the first point of contact of a fisherman when he goes into the sea to come and then, you know, bring his produce. And these centers are not in good condition. They're not hygienic. They don't have uh, basic amenities. So all these centers, now the state government is supporting us with 100 crores to update the to, to upgrade the facilities in these centers, the small, small 350. In addition to this, we are also coming up with uh, new fishing harbors at Jewel Dine of Nellore district, Upada of East Godavari district, and upgradation of fishing harbors in Nizama Patnam, Nizam Patnam under phase one, and also the new fishing harbors at Budgatla Palam, Shrikakulam, Pudimadka, Vishaka Patnam, Biyoputapa, West Godavari, Vodarevu Prakasam, and Kottapatnam Prakasam under phase two. So totally, we have taken the support from Government of India schemes and almost 3,510 3, crores worth uh, uh, schemes we have tied up with FIDF, PMMSY, NABARD, and state funds. And these works are, uh, are now commenced. So when we have commenced these works, the top priority in our mind is that these harbors are just not construction areas. These harbors also will have a very, very, very strong soft component of, you know, quality management of the produce, which, which, uh, uh, which would be of uh, uh, international standards. So once we have to do that, then we have to have uh, the fishermen uh, themselves uh, empowered to do this. So we are now constituting while the harbors are coming up now and will be up and ready in another one, one and a half years. Meanwhile, the FPOs of the farmer fishermen, the FPOs of the fishermen are being constituted. And we, we, we hear that there is a very good management of harbor in Cochin. Similarly, there is one harbor in Tamil Nadu. We hear they do very well. So we will be taking, we will be, we'll be sending these people to those places and we will be doing cross learning from uh, these places which are doing well. And we'll be taking a lot of support from Embeda uh, uh, and uh, you know, build up the capacities of our farmers to maintain these harbors themselves. So fishing harbors in the state, fish landing centers in the state, 350 fish landing centers and fishing harbors, nine that are going to come up. They will be all woven in a way that is not just a construction activity, it's not just a construction activity. It is actually so much to do. The work actually starts after the construction is over. And whose work it is? It is the work of the of this of these bodies which will ensure and which will tie up. So when we are talking of giving uh, quality certificates, uh, now different countries have got different uh, uh, you know uh, parameters. And as you say, they're getting stringent day by day. I had done a 15 days course in Geneva on agreement on agriculture. And the first thing they said, and the last thing, and the first thing they said, future of any product, agri and allied product, is with the countries who have technology, who follow standards. Otherwise, your markets will be beaten in your own land. Your markets, your produce need not be rejected outside the country. It will be rejected in your own land because then that is not anti-dumping. If somebody is bringing produce of a better standard than you are having in your homeland. So this is a cause of, this is a ringing bell for all of us. And as, as you've rightly pointed, we need to concentrate and we need to train our farmers. We need to go to every village. And that's what Andhra Pradesh is very humbly, I want to submit, has started doing last six months. We, we, we have a long way to go, but I'm glad that our government has given the, you know, regulatory support and uh, also infrastructure support in terms of large network of labs 
and also harbors. And also we are now coming up with training of the uh, farmers. So uh, we are also starting uh, 70 aqua hubs in the state with 14,000 unit retail outlets for promotion of domestic marketing under the brand of Fish Andhra, Fit Andhra. So this uh, we are doing uh, with a total project cost of around 558 crores. And this is basically to promote fish eating in the state itself. You'll be surprised to note that white fish and, and prawn from Andhra go all over the world, but people in Andhra don't eat much. So we want to supplement the nut their, their nutrition through this. And so 70 aqua hubs are coming, which is again a quality, uh, which, which is where, where quality concerns are given the top uh, priority. I would also like to inform you that uh, uh, the state is collaborated already with ICR institutions like CIFT, CMFRI, CIFA, CIFRI, and uh, we are uh, uh, we have also visited uh, RGCA, NASCSA, CAA, NB, FGR, and we are you know uh, we are we are tied up with them for technology transfer to produce to promote sustainable practices in fisheries and aquaculture products. And uh, we are also, uh, you know, taking working out strategies for promotion of value addition, standards, branding, and marketing. Since we have the highest production, so all these activities we are doing simultaneously. Uh, the PEDA has always, and PEDA has always been a pillar of support to us. And Mr. Srinivas Ji, uh, you know, he's always there to give all the guidance. Uh, but we. Uh, in the time limit given to me, I don't want to exceed even one minute beyond that. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm very happy to inform you that on all these angles, on all these sides, including zonation, aqua zonation, uh, we have, uh, we are, we are moving forward. But all this would not be sufficient unless we do, and you know, hit uh, uh, the e-marketing side. So such raj retail chain uh, and well-organized supply chain management system accounting system, ordering system, quality assurance system. Andhra Pradesh government is developing an integrated IT solution that creates an efficient back-end system. So the e-platform for e-trading and e-market, we very soon uh, we will launch it. And this will uh, help in managing purchase of fish, shrimps, and other aqua products, inventory management, quality control processes, finance monitoring and decision systems, fleet management, and e-marketing platforms. That will help in order management and also delivery at consumer doorstep and the traceability of the product. Investment opportunities in fisheries and aquaculture sector in our state is on the feed meals for feed meals for aquaculture species, mariculture for high valued species, tuna fishery processing for uh, sashimi grade export, brood stock, uh, stock multiplication, nucleus breeding centers, and intensive crab farming and value addition, integrated aqua parks, and also. Uh, I, I'm, uh, I would like to say that uh, uh, ease of doing business. In, in AP, we are doing ease of doing fisheries or ease of producing fisheries products, quality products. So uh, we, are, we are just moving around. We are, we are just scanning 360 where, where good practices are there, best practices are there. And we want to go there, we want to learn and we want to, and we want to adopt it for our farmers. So I request an appeal to all of you that if you have any good practices or if you have anything that you know will help us in strengthening the capacities of our farmers please uh, do uh, uh, share with us uh, we are willing to uh, learn we are willing to be very happy to integrate that in our uh, uh, state schemes uh, thank you all very much it's been a real pleasure talking to all of you thank you uh, thank you so much ma'am uh... Uh, excellent, and you covered entire supply chain uh, from the, uh, the ponds to the market. And the best thing is that on other Pradesh is doing. Look at the quality of feed and seed. That's going to decide what the what the producer that you're going to give it out of the market. Also, of course, the supply chain infrastructure, the landing center, or the fleet management or thing, and and the whole thing around uh, the capacity building of the farmers. Today, an educated people who do not understand how to change the quality. Quality is not about food safety. Quality also about the whole experience that you get by eating a product. That's the thing in the food, selling food. And in that context, I just want to summarize one thing. If you can bring in fish mark 
the specification and through the FSSAI, then you can grade the fish in a different scale and say that this quality will be this value. Today, whether it's an average value or a high value or a low value, it gets sold in as like a commodity. So from moving from commodity to valuation through the specification is the call of the day. Thank you very much for that bringing it together. And now I'm going to move into. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, and I'm going to invite now Dr. Edia, uh, the retired senior fishery officer, uh, products, uh, trade and market services, FAO Fisheries and Aquaculture Department, and and uh, and he worked on Codex Committee on Fish and Fish Products, and Codex Committee on Food Hygiene, and also uh, part of uh, JMRA. He was expert in vibrios. Uh, that's that's my favorite subject, sir. And and seafood, uh, I look at the food side and was a professor in ICR and PhD in microbiology. Uh, uh, that's my one of the my favorite food microbiology is a thing that I always read till date. So, uh, so I invite you uh, to be talking about uh, things. And now we're going to focus on uh, if you can bring in as you have got experience on FAO, how the world is stepping towards. Uh, 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 the whole thing about a quality transforming towards the experience along with uh, the food safety and, and how the other countries are uh, tightening their standards. Thank you, sir. Over to you. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Arvind uh, and uh, all the panel members. I'm indeed very happy to be part of this uh, panel. And uh, uh, now the previous speakers have already elaborated on a number of uh, issues. Uh, and uh, that make, has uh, set the context uh, uh, very well. So I, I will please uh, permit me to share my screen, uh, where I'll, I'll make trying to make a short presentation about uh, what FAO is doing. Uh, so FAO is a technical organization of the United Nations. So it's providing a lot of technical resources and standards. So in terms of, of course, this is to get an, give you an impression of uh, the headquarters of FAO in Rome. So basically what FAO is doing is collecting uh, data, uh, global data on uh, different aspects of agriculture, fish production and uh, food systems and uh, food trade and also how to utilize these resources and then uh, providing it, analyzing this and presenting this to the member countries and support uh, development of global action plans on evidence uh, to uh, maximize resource utilization, food loss and waste, and uh, other issues. So in terms of fisheries, the major, the flagship uh, publication of uh, FAO is on the state of world fisheries and aquaculture. So when somebody wants to know, so what's going on in um, fish production, say in India or in Thailand or any other part of the world, you can go to this uh, uh, world fisheries and aquaculture so you'll find the analysis what the resources are and how also about uh, how we are utilizing these resources where the uh, resources are declining where we need to take action so this kind of uh, information is provided on a global stage uh, by the fao and uh, the statistical yearbook also provides uh, this information and also emerging issues like climate change, how it is impacting the fisheries and aquaculture, and what are the measures for mitigating this climate change, and how fisheries uh, can be sustained um, in this scenario of climate change. So there are a number of these publications, and uh, what I would like to say is these publications are all freely available. They can be downloaded by one and all. So these are free resources for uh, member countries, uh, governments, uh, industries, academies to uh, make use of. And now, since we are talking about uh, value addition and fish trade, I thought I will also focus a little bit on what FAO is providing in terms of uh, analysis of trade in uh, fisheries products. We have uh, uh, a section called Globe Fish. So Globe Fish is a, a part of FAO which uh, analyzes the trade that is going on globally uh, in different uh, commodities and present this information in uh, number of reports that are coming out uh, from FAO. Now, for example, this trade statistics and how uh, seaweeds and other microalgae culture is uh, uh, developing in different parts of the world. What is the market uh, for these kind of products? So this kind of information is brought out in number of these reports. And also they are analyzing uh, uh, trade uh, and export and import in different countries. 
course, this uh, Globe Fish Insight uh, issue two focused on India and what are the non-tariff measures that are affecting, for example, fish trade in India and um, uh, also about other international markets. So a number of these Globe Fish publications would be of great uh, interest both to governments as well as uh, the industry because uh, a lot of information that is required for promoting trade if you want to know what uh, uh, US requires or what EU requires or what China requires, you will have uh, this information plus also the price fluctuation. And also there is uh, this globe fish market profile country wise. So you can, if you want to export, for example, to a particular country, you can go to this profile and see. Now to give you an impression of this profile, uh, for example, the, I'm just showing Indian profile. So here you can see how it is projected. We have figures on uh, import, export, how India is ranking on uh, ease of doing business, what is the exclusive economic zone, and um, uh, what is the fisheries production in terms of uh, the national GDP. And also uh, there is information on uh, uh, imp uh, exports by value. Now, for example, this is, I think, uh, here we need to focus a little bit because this shows that our uh, processed products are only 14%, 86% are unprocessed. So this is where value addition, there is a lot of scope um, in uh, the various uh, fish uh, products. So this kind of uh, profiles from countries, and these are the commodities which are being exported now from India. So similarly, you can get this data for every country under this uh, global uh, database and how much of the, each commodity is exported to where so this kind of information, I think, is very useful for uh, trade promotion in different parts of the world. And of course, every, all the speakers spoke about uh, international standards. So this is where the Codex Elementarius comes. Codex Elementarius is the joint FAOWHO body which sets uh, international standards, uh, which are science-based. So there is an elaborate process. So when we talk about international trade, we need to keep in mind the requirements of the World Trade Organization, the WTO, which has recognized the three standard setting bodies, the Codex for Food Safety and OAE, or the World Animal Health Organization for uh, Animal Health and IPPC for Plant Health. So these standards, as per the SPS agreement, though each country has a sovereign right to adopt uh, their own standards, but it has to be based on uh, risk assessment, which has to be performed as per internationally accepted measures. And countries have to harmonize their standards. This is where the importance of Codex Elementarius comes. Though Codex standards are voluntary, it is mandated because uh, the WTO recognizes this as a food safety standard. And if there is any trade dispute between two countries, and if one country is adopting a Codex standard, then that will be considered as an international best practice. So this is where the importance of Codex comes and there is a, an elaborate process of uh, developing these standards, which is science-based. So there are uh, expert committees uh, for different issues, microbiological issues, chemical issues, pesticides. So there are these expert uh, groups which will evaluate the latest science. So these are global uh, uh, scientists who are coming, meeting together and uh, looking at the latest science and then uh, developing these uh, recommendations, which will then go to the Codex Elementaris Commission, which will then develop uh, microbiological criteria or maximum residue limits for uh, additives or pesticides or chemicals and other issues. So it's uh, highly science-based and uh, this uh, resource can be utilized by other countries. Now, for example, these are some examples of uh, some of these risk assessments. Now, I would like to mention about uh, this Vibrio cholera risk assessment, which was taken up by FAOWHO, in which I had a part. So this was taken up because number of uh, importing countries were banning export of seafood from countries which had the disease cholera, not because they found the causative agent in the seafood, but just because the disease is there, the seafood import was banned. So is it uh, scientifically valid? So that's why FAOWHO took this up, and this risk assessment clearly showed that it is uh, not uh, scientifically correct to ban import when you have no detection because now you have uh, quality control methods like you have good hygienic practice, you have HACCP. So by adopting these kind of methods, you can produce uh, uh, seafood which is uh, acceptable internationally. So this kind of information coming from FAO and WHO based on a scientific risk assessment would be important to convince uh, buyers about the quality. And also how to, now you may say, okay, you have to achieve the standard. 
you have to achieve this much residue level or you have to uh, follow this microbiological criteria. But how do we achieve that? What do the operators need to do? So for this, uh, F the Codex has come out with the code of practice. So what the industry needs to do, what the aquaculture needs to do, processor need to do. So this is uh, laid down in this code of practice. And these are uh, the standards which are available in the fish and fish product sector. So you can go to the website of Codex and download all these standards. So they are uh, available in English. So these are uh, for different uh, types of uh, fishery products and um, also regarding contaminants, toxins, uh, food additives, because when we talk about uh, ready to eat products, so additives may be used and residues of veterinary drugs are a major issue. So these are all clearly laid down in the codex uh, standards and also regarding regulations available from the various countries there is a fao lex database so if you want to know what is the regulation of china you can uh, get from this database or in vietnam so you can this will be very useful uh, also for the industry to know what the regulations are in different parts of the world and then re regard there are also a number of guidelines now for example people talked about uh, sustainability now, of course, voluntary guidelines for secu securing sustainable small-scale fisheries and also uh, investment. There are also studies done on investment opportunities in uh, fishery sector. And these reports are also available for uh, accessing. And Code of Conduct for Responsible Fisheries is a major uh, guideline from FAO. And there are a number of technical guidelines uh, related to quality, safety, re uh, responsible use of veterinary medicines and a uh, number of other uh, technical guidelines related to code of conduct for responsible fisheries. And also, when also the uh, previous speakers talked about certification that is required. There are a number of private certifying bodies, of aquaculture certification, there is global gap, and uh, there are so many other bodies. Now, how to harmonize this? So FAO came up with this technical guideline, how uh, this certification schemes can be developed. And these uh, guidelines can be used by countries at national level to develop national level certification and then harmonize with international uh, uh, certification uh, uh, systems. This is also available for uh, capture fisheries and also antimicrobial resistance is a major issue now. And also how to uh, improve food safety. There is, a, of course, this is a joint work between FAO and WHO. And, uh, I'll request you to uh, complete your presentation, sir. Uh, and also, time. there is an e-learning academy, so you can get this information. So, FAO has a lot of these technical resources, uh, which can be made use of uh, by countries. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for that uh, informative uh, uh, session of yours, uh, giving how to play in the international market and how FAO can help us. Uh, FAO has all the databases on the practices of best practices document and certification, et cetera. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, now, I may, uh, may I invite <clears throat> a male, uh, Dr. L. Narasimha Murthy, Senior Executive Director, NFTB. Uh, so uh, he, he has worked in fish protein industry uh, and, and surimi and surimi based products, residue contaminants, value addition, nut nut nutrient fortification, one of the big things that he has worked on and self-life extension. Which are the things we're talking about today? If you can extend the self life, you can really create value in the international market and develop and high value by products. I would request you to keep your uh, uh, keep your deliberations uh, unto five minutes, sir, because we have five speakers more and we have exactly 38 minutes left. So we'll take it to another 15 minutes there, sir. Thank you, members. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Arvind, sir. Uh, most respected Karnasagar sir and uh, uh, respected uh, uh, chairmen of uh, MPDA and all our uh, invitees, friends. Uh, of course, my job made very easy. Uh, many uh, speakers from morning, uh, starting from our secretary uh, to, uh, the, I mean, Mr. Alex Nainan, Baby Marian Group, Arjun Gadre, uh, uh, Gadre Group, and now Mr. Uh, Amit, um, and then uh, <laughs> One of Madam, uh, everybody, I think the uh, MPA chairman, everybody has covered my topic. Today's topic uh, is the standards, traceability, and uh, marketing and branding. Most of the things uh, is covered. So if I repeat again, it will be uh, uh, repetition only. So other than that, uh, a few points just as a development agency, NFDB, 
or what we are doing uh, and how we are, uh, I mean, monitoring the things, those part I will highlight within five minutes. Uh, so as uh, everybody is aware, uh, uh, like uh, as Atmanirbha package, uh, we have uh, Pradham, Pradhan Mantri Matsampada Yojana. Uh, due to this, uh, uh, I mean, uh, program, I think most of our uh, uh, states as well as Union Territories are very aggressively, um, uh, I mean, taking the fisheries as one of the uh, major uh, uh, agriculture and allied sector uh, uh, sector. So, so most of the uh, definitely huge target is there for us, uh, as already many speakers have presented. Uh, so it's a 1 lakh crore, there's a foreign exchange and uh, to, to 220 lakh ton as a uh, fish production. Uh, yeah. So um, it's uh, not that much uh, difficult to make it, but there are issues as our uh, chairman MPD also mentioned, there is huge uh, issues uh, when it comes to culture aspects. So we have uh, single species, we have shrimps, we have uh, uh, fin fishes, we have marine sector also. Huge, uh, I mean, post harvest losses, almost 60,000 tons as a post harvest losses. So if you can reduce even 50% uh, of that, 30% of that, I think that part uh, can be added to our uh, foreign exchange in addition to parallel increase of the production. So when it comes to the uh, uh, standards, I think uh, already there is a uh, well, uh, I mean, uh, designed uh, uh, SOPs and uh, standards are there with us. Um, if you take uh, international export market and all those things, many uh, speakers already presented. We have uh, uh, USFDA standards, FAO FA standards, BAS standards, and necessary for Indian products. Well, our own, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, vendors, our own, uh, should be, uh, I mean, uh, follow these standards, um, I mean, uh, maximum level so that we can have a good quality products for the consumer. So when it comes to traceability, uh, yes, there is an um, issue with the traceability, production, uh, uh, processing and distribution. This is very important. But uh, we have two sectors, marine sector and aquaculture sector. In that, uh, uh, we have a little organized way of, uh, I mean, uh, making in uh, aquaculture sector. But when it comes to marine sector, especially multi-day fishing, uh, we have pelagic fish, deep sea fishing, uh, so many variety. Uh, I mean, boats also, persinas and all those things. It's very difficult to get the, I mean, the prime quality of the fish. If you can have the total control on that harvesting things, harvesting ground. Nowadays, with all our uh, latest technology, potential fishing zone, with all space applications and all those things, even for directly a uh, fisherman can go and catch the fish. If you can maintain the data, we can understand what size of fish and where which ground, I mean, uh, what are that uh, chlorophyll content and all those. So that's easy for the site. And other work. Then, onboard handling facility. As Madam Menshia Pradesh itself is having years with very uh, poor uh, uh, infrastructures. That uh, uh, I mean, uh, the lot of prime quality fishes can be processed. Then, uh, when it comes to the suppliers. Uh, when they give the uh, uh, action is over, then supplier takes the fish. I think we should uh, uh, avoid this unauthorized peeling. That is one area actually we are losing a lot of uh, quality of the fish. So, we are, I mean, uh, processors, um, they should process at the processing plant itself. So, then uh, we can, uh, they can understand what is the quality of fish. When aquaculture, again, uh, selection of broad bank, then uh, seed production, stocking. Then farm registration. This is very very important. We should I think we should stop uh, whatever that unauthorized uh, farm. I mean uh, farms are culturing the species, whether it's a fin fish or uh, shrimps. Uh, then then uh, certification. I think many speakers already. Cisco Indian uh, shrimps. So uh, I, we we can have a, I mean a total like feeding schedule. Uh, what uh, chemicals they are using, how they are stocking. Uh, I mean everything if they can document, so that it can have a transparency. We can understand where exactly it went problem. Like uh, I mean un understanding cluster based uh, aqua zones, uh, aqua zonations. These are I think need of the hour. Uh, NFD also very closely working, even DYF uh, um, very closely working with uh, all the state government to understand the aquaculture aspects. Then uh, when it comes to marketing and branding, uh, so NFDB actually uh, is
Madhantri uh, Masampadi Yojana, we are providing uh, kiosks, we are providing uh, mobile vans, we are providing uh, like uh, establishment of retail outlet and all those things. In addition to that, uh, we have, uh, uh, we have conducted many, uh, I mean, uh, uh, contest, um, advertisements and uh, contest for the different uh, uh, people, like uh, to attract the, the we can give uh, like uh, AP fish, as Madam mentioned, like Amber Tiger, they gather. So they have their own uh, catchy, uh, I mean, uh, brand name for them. For that, we are also our own beneficiaries. We are providing uh, uh, some name, attractive name, tagline, logo, symbol, a design with focus details of quality parameters and benefits, so that uh, they can market it with uh, NFDB logos. Um, uh, that that we are working very closely with that. Then uh, we uh, tagline and slogans. Actually, we uh, we uh, conducted a uh, I mean uh, uh, program for that eleven languages. Almost one seventy eight contestants attended attended that. Then um, uh, for the domestic fish consumption, uh, creation of separate brand name with logo. That is we are working uh, closely with them. Then in addition to that, whatever the hatchery we are establishing from our side. So NFDB is ready to do the marketing with our logo. Uh, with uh, I mean uh, starting to end like uh, selection of broad uh, broad bank to the uh, I mean, until it reaches me. to I'll the, request uh, you to uh, complete your project. 30 seconds, 30 seconds, 30 seconds. Yeah. So one more thing, uh, fish market price information system. This is one actually uh, NFDB from uh, we are working with that. Every week we are collecting a uh, marine system, freshwater system, north east. We have three different uh, uh, zones. We are collecting uh, a fish rate uh, with our enumerators. We are uh, displaying this in all our uh, social media. Like uh, uh, we have, uh, uh, I mean, our own uh, uh, Twitter. Then we have a Facebook account everywhere. Everywhere uh, it is uh, available. So that uh, then easily they can see the uh, which fish is uh, uh, available in particular rate uh, like that. Then in addition to that, uh, even jingles, all these things with red, uh, red FM uh, uh, radios and many other uh, uh, fish festivals, uh, even uh, World Fish Festival, all these things uh, we are attending, we are awarding them, we are uh, identifying the progressive farmers, uh, especially vendors who are doing domestic market, improving on them. CSR also, we are working with them. So with this, I conclude. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. Yeah. You're on mute. Sir, you're in mute. Thank you. So, thank you so much, uh, uh, sir. And uh, uh, I know that we are tracking you know, NFDB is an effort towards you now creating the logo, the tagline, et cetera, et cetera. And that's the real step towards you know, brand and, and, and differentiation creation. Thank you so much for that. Uh, now, uh, may I now invite uh, 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 Mr. Aswini Kumar Rai, G, additional chief secretary and chairman of MP Revenue Board, Government of Madhya Pradesh. And, uh, and he's, he's a 1990 batch IS officer from Madhya Pradesh and has a rich knowledge and experience in fishery sector. Uh, and I was, I was been talking to CII and that, you know, uh, when this COVID is going to finish and I'm going to visit Bhopal. Because I have my eye on Bhopal after I visited around five states already and talking to various uh, different fisheries and, uh, and, and senior secretaries there. Uh, so welcome you uh, to this session. And I would only request you, you know, I'm now looking at the time and everyone's uh, uh, time there to, uh, to do seven minutes. Uh, so if you can limit your deliberation, I know you are full of experience and everything, a lot to, to take it from you, but I am constrained. So sorry about it. Thank you, sir. Over to you. Thank you very much, Arvind ji. And uh, you know, I assure you, I'll take lesser than seven minutes. My my job has been made easier by a uh, ma'am from Andhra. You know, you put me against Andhra, which which is almost like uh, China versus India in terms of uh, uh, fish production. So uh, you know, uh, but I'll be delighted to share whatever uh, uh, recently has been taking place in this sector uh, uh, from the CII uh, uh, context. I like to take a whole lot of contrarian views and I'll not repeat what ma'am has already said because we, we are guided by similar schemes and uh, same, uh, you know, activities are taking place all across the country. And, and uh, you know, so it makes no purpose, uh, makes no sense for me to be repeating what all things are being done in the sector. What has been left unsaid, I'll, I'll uh, basically refer to that. Uh, first point, I'm a vegetarian, you know. I'm a vegetarian. Last four years, I, I was ACS uh, fisheries. Uh, recently, I moved out. I served even as, uh, uh, you know, in fishery sector in Kerala. So I have a smattering of, uh, you know, uh, you know, exposure to the, the marine side as well as the uh, inland now. 
and uh, believe me uh, the the action actually lies now in the england side uh, talking of uh, uh, talking of madhya pradesh i, I already said i, I think vis a vis the uh, andhra uh, you know we are uh, pygmy but but then the kind of things that are happening now gives me lot of hope you know the youngsters who are coming basically the the culture side not not on the capture side which has been the the ministry of uh, uh, you know most of the uh, inland uh, states the the action actually is in the uh, culture side now uh, if you had time i would have shared uh, videos of uh, uh, what youngsters are doing and uh, you know you would be surprised uh, when you place all all these activities the the agriculture and allied sector activities uh in terms of the returns that they are earning it 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 really you know leaves all the sectors behind by a wide margin so of late uh, you know uh, it's it's very uh, heartening to note that there has been a has been a good movement as far as the youngsters are concerned a uh, whole lot of uh, you know uh, it graduates whole lot of uh, you know of experts from other sectors are moving on to this and we had had uh, you know developments which last 4 years 5 years were just unheard of you know uh, uh, my my colleague shrinivas just mentioned it our sector is quite nascent now you know let's not uh, you know, <laughs> shrinivas no no uh, you know i'm not uh, good evening you know, sir good evening a long time i'm having your darshan chalo good good at least cii made us meet yeah <laughs> okay so let's not make uh, too much of a fuss about uh, you know the the quality the the uh, you know uh, various other issues that was being mentioned the the entire sector is so discerning i tell you a fish from a particular reservoir gets a tag and gets a premium in calcutta delhi and bombay so it's not that people who buy fish are foolish enough to be buying anything and everything they may not carry a very fancy tag of let's say you know certified by uh, you know our our uh, you know uh, fishery development board or certified by my state government but they know they know what kind of thing they are buying and uh, you know what to expect from that product so uh, you know not so directly but indirectly that quality uh, you know differentiation and and the uh, uh, addition of uh, a premium to that is there in the market okay and nowadays as i said uh, the youngsters who are coming the traceability bit is so important uh, you know especially the the retail uh, you know uh, chains that you see now before they they uh, get into tie up with you they come and visit your premises they look at what all things you are adding uh, indirectly you are asked by the market to stick to a quality regimen same thing applies to feed same thing applies to seed you know uh, and this sector in last 4 5 years i have been seeing even seed you know uh, the person who is a producer of seed he has to assure that the, the seed uh, you know stays alive uh, the mortality is not beyond a particular point and and the payment is on on the on on the seeds that that are uh, you know remaining alive maybe after 10 days 15 days so these kind of quality checks no uh, not in direct terms but indirectly is already sipping in creeping in the system so uh, you know it's happening uh, i i'll tell you the the uh, setting times are ahead you you can ask your colleagues to uh, you know consider it we we have quite a lot of people inquiries coming here uh, at the moment funding is no issue the in terms of uh, returns i haven't seen a single sector uh uh just just one uh you know uh, anecdote we had a senior colleague from tamil nadu who was msc fee series got into is subsequently he was not doing anything and now he is doing uh, you know aquaculture in chennai the other day he spoke to me and he said uh, you know seven years i think i not what to do he got into uh, you know aquaculture and he is doing fantastically okay so uh, you know exciting times are happening so fabulous you know upwards of 100% uh, returns a year uh, I, i don't see that kind of return any sector uh, giving as of now covid or no covid doesn't make a difference with covid only thing that uh, happens is 
the, the catches are taken two months later. That's it. You know, I, I don't uh, sell my produce at throw prices. In fact, my, my produce is uh, 10, uh, you know, percent, uh, you know, uh, higher in weight. So, uh, you know, exciting times. Uh, most of the states, as you said, uh, I think ma'am also mentioned uh, the Andhra, uh, there was a mention also. The, the, the demand in the country is too less. So we need to work on that. Then only Srinivas can do, uh, you know, uh, on that because uh, export led, uh, you know, uh, growth, China's experience hasn't been uh, too, too heartening. So we need to have a, a, a you know, a domestic consumption. And then you can always think of uh, exporting. Incidentally, I, I was uh, uh, in London just before COVID. I just moved around and, uh, you know, looked at the, the cells there. Though I'm a vegetarian, as I said, I looked around at the cells. Uh, the, the delta, the, the additionality that you gain by way of exporting is not too much. Uh, you know, uh, Srinivas also mentioned it's cutthroat kind of a, uh, you know, market. So uh, as of now, I don't see too much of a, uh, you know, scope for, uh, uh, you know, sort of exponentially growing our, our export market. But but then I think, uh, you know, as, as he was uh, telling you, the, the process bit is something that we need to work on. That, that's from my side. Uh, I think, uh, you know, when you come uh, uh, visiting uh, Bhopal, do let me know. Thank you. Thank you, sir. No, the, the positive note, a very lot of enthusiasm, positivity, and I know uh, Madhya Pradesh has got a huge resource of reservoirs, and and rightly said, the, the quality of this depends on uh, uh, on the color and flavor and, and the whole experience of flavor there, and that depends on the quality of water and depth. Uh, so about the vegetarian energy, I was in uh, Sri Lanka. I asked for a vegetarian dish. They gave me a fish and shrimp. So, <laughs> so but yeah. this sector, as Mr. Sinmasamji was talking, what you were talking about, I have in Orissa. I come from Orissa. After that, uh, Hirako Dam Reservoirs. I know I have met those entrepreneurs, young entrepreneurs from the fishermen folks, are coming in and talking about a uh, circular cage and doing that. Uh, so that's uh, thank you very much for bringing in that and very positive note. Thank you so much. Uh, now let me uh, invite uh, uh, Dr. Dineshan uh, Churba, uh, a managing director of Masha Fed, and he is he is he is he is the he was the additional director of fishery uh, and government of Kerala, and he has a huge experience, 20 years of experience in fishery sector. So my my thing is that Kerala is the forefront of everything, and Kerala also has got like Mr. Srinivas was talking about. The industry sitting capacity not utilized. I know the biggest uh, 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 tuna fish processor from there, an expat ex trying to export into export into various countries. Thing is that you now Mr. Srinivasan talked about a very uh, one liner. China is the biggest processor of fish from various countries. In that now that is shifting towards Southeast Asia. We're talking about in the Commerce Ministry that why can't we become and Kerala become the hub and Minister of Food Processing is ready to put up. Come in and, and, and help in infrastructure development. So everything can be done. That value addition, exporting back. And of course, there is a challenge of uh, uh, that you know, sanitary import permits where we're deba debating is it a live or is it frozen? Frozen fish. Fish. Why needs a sanitary import permit? We're talking about all those in Kerala. So over to you, sir. Uh, so uh, so uh, for your, your, your comments and views and how do you take the Kerala fishery in ahead? Thank you. Thank you, sir. I uh, hope I am audible. Yes, sir. You're, you're, you're audible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. So, uh, as you know, sir, uh, I'll speak on uh, Malsebit only because I was asked to speak on that because our uh, chairman could not attend uh, because, uh, see, uh, somebody uh, in his family has uh, died today morning. So, he has asked me to present. As you know, sir, Malsebit established 37 years back in 1987 is one of the successful and leading cooperative movements in fishery sector in, uh, of the country. And last year also in 2021 also, we got the NFDB award for the best performing cooperative sector in fishery, sec cooperative in fishery sector. Then uh, we have, we are the, we are the Apex Federation of 660, 660 fisher, fishermen primary cooperatives aim at uh, promoting production, procurement, processing and marketing of fish and fish products. And uh, we have 340 uh, uh, cooperatives in marine sector, 
and uh, uh, 200 cooperatives in land sector and 120 women cooperatives. Malsivid uh, is uh, having a leading role in organizing and conducting uh, beach level auction of uh, catch of the member fishermen through which fishermen get a better price for their produce. In addition to beach level auction, Malsivid has a chain of 109 retail fresh fish outlets and uh, um, and we are adding to more uh, in this year we are planning to add 140 new uh, fish outlets through our cooperatives cooperatives uh, and 2022 varieties of fishes collected from primary cooperatives are sold to customers in a very hygienic matter at a reasonable rate the total save value of uh, this mart alone is approximately 80 crores per annum multiple is also operating at 10 uh, Fishery and mobile marts in major towns of Kerala to supply good quality fish and fish uh, products to our customers uh, at their doorsteps. And now we have started the online marketing of fish also. And regarding our uh, processing and value addition, Malsevati have a fish processing and exporting plant at Cochin. It is the largest plant in public sector handed over to Malsevati from Kerala Fishes Development Corporation and uh, now the unit focused on value addition of marine fish and shrimp and exports these products to china middle east and africa uh, mo mostly in frozen condition and uh, now uh, we have the we have also started value added products like uh, fish fillets streaks and uh, many other products like pickles uh, from this unit and our uh, prawn pickle, uh, fish pickle, squid pickle, fish cutlets, fish uh, prawn roast, etc., are very popular in Kerala. Uh, we are uh, now planning to expand our market. And this year, uh, our uh, government is also planning to establish three more uh, pro uh, this uh, value addition centers in Kerala. Uh, one of which is coming up in Alapi district, in Changanur Alapi district, with the technical support from uh, Central Institute of Fishes Technology. And here, uh, one more thing I, I would like to add is that uh, Kerala, we, we are famous for tuber crops also. Here with the CTCR, Central Tuber Crops Research Institute, uh, we are adding uh, fish flavors to these uh, tuber products also. Because uh, this uh, tapioca, you know, is very popular in Kerala and now it is getting popular in other parts of India also. And uh, uh, regarding uh, other value-added products, uh, one thing I would like to add is that we have a chitin and chitosin plant which produces different grades of chitin and chitosin from prawn waste. Otherwise, this waste would uh, be dumped in somewhere and it will not be processed sometimes and may, uh, may having a health hazard like that. But now, it is most of these uh, prawn shells are being processed in our uh, chitin and chitosin plant at the column. And the plant has a capacity of 60 tons of chitin per annum. And the demand is more, but uh, so that we are uh, proposing to expand uh, this unit in next financial year. This uh, unit also produces a, and market an anti-fat formula derived from prawn shell under the brand of Kytone, uh, which is also getting popular in uh, nowadays. And we have a common processing center at uh, Shakti Kolangara in Kollam district, which is a joint uh, venture with uh, Yampida. Uh, is engaged in pre-processing mainly. Uh, it, it was established uh, initially mainly for uh, rehabilitation of uh, women pre-processing workers. And in one shift, we, we can give employment to 280 fisher women. And uh, now we are uh, on another mood to strengthening the uh, fisheries cooperatives in various parts of Kerala. And our uh, uh, cooperatives are coming, with, uh, coming up with uh, new projects in aquaculture as well as marketing and also in value addition. Uh, we are uh, trying to uh, train them with the support of SIFT and also with our uh, already established uh, value addition uh, uh, centers. And as uh, somebody else has mentioned, we have, we have also huge potential for inland fishes also. We have the extensive backwaters, we have so many reservoirs, and the aquaculture production is uh, getting uh, improved in the last two few years. But uh, one, one thing we face, the uh, one, one important issue we face is that our Keralites are not fond, of, fond with uh, this freshwater fish. So our uh, freshwater produce mainly the tilapia or basa. Uh, we cannot sell as fresh, fresh fish. 
So here, uh, one important uh, uh, the intervention we propose is to establish some value addition centers so that this uh, this uh, fish can be processed. And one uh, one uh, paradox is that we are getting the massa fillets or other fillets from uh, Vietnam also. So there is a scope for further scope for uh, this processing, especially of uh, inland fish. That also we are uh, uh, trying to uh, uh, cover up in the coming years. And that's also and the, within this short time. And uh, I was asked that the program will be end up with <laughs> six o'clock. So thank you so much for uh, giving uh, me an opportunity to speak. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, sir, so much. So now uh, the best thing is that you have uh, brought in the the, the circular economy that uh, value from west. How do you know chitin and chitosin and oligomers from the shrimp west? That's I think now it has to be taken from Kerala and to the various parts. Various coastal states, or wherever the same uh, processing is happening, how do you going to leverage, create value out of that? And and a lot of value addition products I know during the pickles and everything, which is a self stable product, you know, ambient temperature control products. So which is which is the right way to go towards? Uh, uh, thank you for that, bringing in a very short time, and uh, also look at these. I told you that's import of, and we're talking to Russia for your information. We're talking to Russia. We've got a couple. And some lead from Russia at CII, and they're really looking at India as a processing center and processing and be given back to them. So, some uh, Ministry of Food Processing uh, 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 and representative are here, so they are also looking at how they can help. And then Kerala is the best place to do that. So, thank you so much for that, sir. I have one question uh, to Mr. Uh, uh, okay. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> ஆந்திரா <laughs> Yes, yes, sir, sir. That, that's yes, the reason sir. I've given you a solution. No, Russian fish comes in the fish, all the black factory you're going to get filled up. <laughs> Very easy. Yes, nothing, to here, nothing to do here because raw material is coming from Andhra. Yes, sir. Yeah. Sir, sir, two things. Say, 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 two things I would like to yes, bring the attention of radio, sir. It is going down. Yes, yes, sir, yes, sir. Sir, once we were first, but now we were no over <laughs> in, in aquaculture. <laughs> sir, but thing is that, sir, the, just before this meeting, our secretary has a meeting uh, uh, regarding the Nidhi Aayog, some of the presentations made by Nidhi Aayog, in which this weakness in uh, this inland aquaculture was specifically mentioned. Now, we have a five-year plan now for increasing our aquaculture production from this uh, 35,000 tons to 1,35,000 tons by five years. Sir, another thing is that uh, our uh, see we are facing certain issues with the freshwater aquaculture, sir. Now we are we have we, we have taken up the reservoir fisheries in a large scale last year. Now our product mainly the gift tilapia we cannot sold as fresh or frozen. So we need some uh, the technology for uh, value addition of this gift tilapia as well as basa. Basa is uh, getting sir uh, you you won't believe farmers are so uh, at, uh, selling basa at uh, rupees forty a kg. So at least they should get 80 a kg and for a tilapia with the coastal production at least we get 200 rupees a kg for tilapia, this gift tilapia. So this processing is the only way out to save our fishermen engaged in freshwater aquaculture. For brackish water and marine we don't have any issue sir. Whatever brackish water species and fresh, uh, marine species it will be sold out as fresh, frozen or value added products. But freshwater fish, we are, we are really facing issues. That's why our Honorable Minister has taken up uh, this project for establishing three uh, value addition centers in uh, uh, South, Central and North part of, Northern part of Kerala. Only to address this issue. And it was his suggestion to add the tuber crops, tuber products with the fish. So we have taken up this issue with the CTCRI. Uh, we, we should not uh, uh, involve in a one to one conversation. I think Mr. Arvind must be here. Uh, <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, whole, uh, whole issue. Thank you. Thank you yes, so yes, much. Next time when I come uh, to Kochi, I will meet you, sir. I will have a one, uh, one, uh, one suggestion for you, sir, uh, for the, for the realization, higher value realization. Look at uh, South Asia and look at you know fresh fish exports and 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 my deliberation with a couple of countries makes that that can possible 
and some species are there and Mr. Srinivasan is an expert in that. But we are talking to ministry that how do you create infrastructure in Kerala and one in Bombay or, or two or three infrastructure airport based so that it can handle fresh fish in the international market. Thank you so sir, much. One, one more thing, uh, sir. And now, now and Kerala, we have an association with Vietnam, Kerala Vietnam Association for this, uh, uh, this uh, fisheries and food processing. So we have already taken up with this issue with Vietnam. Already uh, two rounds of discussion has already uh, undertaken with uh, uh, CM in chair. Thank you, sir. So now Thank let you, me sir. invite uh, my last speaker. Uh, th thanks, uh, Mr. Burgess, uh, for having our patience. And, and we are now well past 6, 18, 18 minutes over our uh, scheduled time. And, uh, uh, and, and, and uh, Kings Marine is one of the oldest, uh, oldest uh, uh, sea, uh, expo uh, processor and exporter. And, uh, and you have been taking charge for the last 20 years from your father and, and, uh, and from civil engineering uh, to fishery, the transition that he shows to the country that what a civil engineer can do, that any, anyone can do for that. So thank you so much for coming out. Things that bring this from your experience and not so much of experience in your company, bring it that, bring it out that now what is that India look at, or five things look at for the high, va high value realization and also increasing the market share in various countries and what we need to do. Thank you so much. Over to you, sir. You're mute, sir. You're mute, sir. I'm, I'm, so, I'm so sorry. Okay, thank you for the kind words. And uh, let me correct you. This is a mechanical screen, not civil. And refrigeration is mostly mechanical. I think uh, Srinivas, sir, also, I think, is a mechanical engineer, uh, if, if I'm not wrong. Okay. Uh, anyway, now uh, coming to the topic. Now, uh, as we don't have time, I'll just cut short and just give you a idea of what the exporter thinks of all what you people have been talking here now uh, as far as value addition uh, our topic is concerned we have been supply uh, a raw material supplier to most of these pro reprocessing hubs around the world now whether it's for vietnam whether it's china whether it's thailand indonesia all of them now uh, we have it's high time that we you know step forward and move to the next level now, uh, there is no reason why India shouldn't, uh, you know, move up. And now the values, uh, unlocking the value is going to be the easiest way to go up the, you know, to move the volume up, I mean, the value up. Now, what I understand is now the ecosystem uh, required to be built first has to be built by the government. Now, uh, I heard everything that was talked about quality, about standards, all of that. But let me just tell you one thing, as you unlock value, as India in overall value, probably we are somewhere around 11% by quantity and 14, uh, about 14, 15% by, uh, you know, value, uh, as far as value added products are concerned. The moment you start moving this up, you're going to have ITBs and SPS, you know, all sorts of barriers all around the world cropping up. Now, what is the government doing to help the exporter? The exporter, you know, faces the brunt of the, the issue because whenever you add value the value per container goes up and this container when it's rejected elsewhere is being rejected for some parameter or the other i hear people saying it's you know you need to improve quality no it's not just quality it is the perception of putting in you know itbs invisible trade barriers very slyly very cunningly and using intelligence so now how do you how do you counter this that is the first thing that is required now, uh, I, I would like to use this platform to appeal to the government, uh, if someone's listening, that, you know, any container that goes out from India with a certificate from the Export Inspection Agency, which is directly controlled by EIC, should have a free, hassle-free movement back to the exporters' cold storage if it's rejected anywhere. It can be dealt with later on by EIC under their supervision or, you know, under their guidance or whatever, because most of these trade barriers are very silly things which are not in the control of the exporter. Now you have heavy metal rejections all around the world. What on earth can the exporter do to bring the heavy metal down? You find fault that he didn't find out the level of the heavy metal before he shipped it out. My dear, every every squid, every cuttlefish has a different level. When it's caught from different areas, even if you caught from the same area, you get a varying level. So there is an amount of, you know, uh, there is a requirement here to understand how other countries are dealing with this. 
if you are based in kerala or if, sorry if you are based in india if you are going to have an extra you know risk in this that's not going to be the way you are going to unlock value so i'm just saying you know, you know, there are certain things that have to be done you know uh, very uh, on the basic level where you can guarantee that you know when a product becomes the product shipped out by exporter he didn't he didn't produce it as such if it's a squid or a cuttlefish or a cephalopod it belonged to the government of india where it was living it is being shipped out by an exporter it gets caught somewhere it should get back here because its value need to get unlocked there are other countries which will not have the same value but unfortunately what's happening is when the container comes back at the port you have different competing agencies vying for a piece of the pie that is what it is and that is not the way it should be we should have a system where uh, you know the uh, the government should understand how as you add value the risk goes up the risk will keep on going up and now today what you see won't be the barriers now look at china china has come up with a, a very very silly barrier of finding covid on the carton chairman knows chairman has been trying you know has been trying with every agency finally the only solution they said was spray some chlorine but the fact of the matter is whether it's europe whether it's america all of them know there's covid and they are not looking at uh, swabbing cartons they're not doing it because they're not the intention is different so we need to understand these standards that they're talking about are not very very transparent like you know we would like to very innocently believe okay that's done for what i think the government can do for us now uh, as far as unlocking value we can the the lower low hanging fruits easily for the bulk of these exports you know you you were mentioning how many uh, the capacity i heard chairman say 40% i think kerala's capacity you know utility may be way 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 below the 40% uh, this is because we are traditionally dependent on the ocean catch now ocean catch has been winning for various other reasons it's not only overfishing it is also the sea water temperature and other allied issues now basically what we could do is you know most of the catch could slowly move to uh, a retail pack that is the low hanging fruit straight away you get add value to what you are giving indonesia to do or vietnam to do or china to do most of these products going for reprocessing into china and vietnam are not all being cooked or ready to eat products they are just making silly value out of something that we do we could do so that is the low hanging fruit when it goes higher you need its capital intensive and it's going to be a lot of you know a lot of hard work because what you need to understand is this reprocessing the concept of reprocessing hubs like vietnam thailand all were originally you know pushed by the japanese who were trying to produce very very high value added products now to get there we need to have a shift in our culture and our mindset it's not easy it's not easy because we we have the manpower we have the uh, technically we have the uh, you know uh, raw material raw material is our strength we are giving this raw material to these people but what we are lacking is the basically in one word mindset uh, how can we get that consistency the consistency is the issue whether it's in fishing whether it's in quality or whether it is in the mindset of producing a uniform quality throughout so uh, that that's regarding the higher hanging fruits if you want to get straight away to the branded uh, ready to eat products now coming to branding i heard a lot of views here but i have a slightly contrary view uh, chairman mentioned it uh, actually to get to a fine level of uh, you know having a international brand it's a big herculean task in seafood simply because of the a uh, superb image that certain brands hold in their countries so that is the reason you have the bigger exporters even the very big exporters depending on the brands but the way to look at it is how do you get finish out of your product use those india international brands get the opportunity to pack for them maybe 3 years 5 years finish your product by the time have a brand that can take off so use it as a stepping stone to the next brand it's not just like you go and have an advertisement blitz and then you know the blitz will take you through no the, the way it works is for example when you talk about finishing products for japan the uh, the those vietnamese factories what they are able to achieve for japan or the thai factories for us to reach there itself are going to take years it's not going to be like one year or two years so it's not only the machinery or the capital of course the capital intensive uh products are there but i'm talking about original value addition for example simply by just not shipping your tuna for canning ship it somewhere else for maybe you know 10 times the value 
that those things have to happen if there is intensive uh, capital put into the tuna fleet. But you can do silly things like, you know, just adding value by uh, just doing the other sashimi products. For example, your cuttlefish, your squid, all the live stuff can be done sashimi. But for that, what we need is we need uh, more and more people just opening to that and we need government support. This is not the right platform to explain exactly why, what is lacking. Maybe where, when the government approaches industry, those things can be, you know, so I'm, because I'm running short of time, I think I'll, I'll just wind up. Uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vergis, for that uh, you know, uh, upfront and very candid view about it. I agree with you that you know, moving from B2B, bulk to B, bulk to bulk to exposed to you know, private labeling, uh, to retail packaging, even you do the Private labeling to the retail packaging with, with the packaging solution available, which can be sifted out, sipped in minus 20 degrees Celsius, sold at the cell at 4 degree temperature, overcoming an overnight. Because in my experience in Tyson Foods, we increase the cell fiber of a poultry bird to 15 days. And at a 4 degree temperature, it can be crushed, frozen, and put in the cell and at 4 degree temperature and sold. So the same private level can increase the valuation or realization from, from bulk to retail pack and then go for branding. Branding is not, as, I'm not talking about branding or giving in a one kind of page or something somewhere. It's a brand building exercise which takes years to come and, and to create a differentiation. That's the key, finding a differentiation in a particular target market and, 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 and leveraging that. So thank you very much for bringing that out. So with that, you know, uh, we, we come to the end. We have 30 minutes. I had of our no uh, several time uh, over to uh, over to you. Uh, thank you, sir. Reto, yeah, thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, thank you, everyone. With this, we bring our session and the conference to a close. I would like to express my sincere gratitude to the Ministry of Fisheries, Animal Husbandry and Daring for collaborating with us. A very special thank you to MPDA and NFDB for supporting us on this conference. Thank you to our program partner, World Fish, and our sponsors, Waterbase and Gadri Marine Export. So lastly, thank you to each of our eminent speakers and all participants for joining us today and deliberating on this very important dialogue. On behalf of CII, I thank each of you and reiterate our commitment towards working to scale up the fisheries sector and the livelihood of fish.